Hello and welcome to video 52. For those of you who are my physics students this year, this doesn't really pertain to you, but somebody asked me a, uh, an environmental science question, which is really a thermodynamics question, and that is if you have some boiler that is going to raise the temperature of water from 20 degrees to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, like say the hot water heater in your house, uh, how many gallons of water can you do that for if you're adding 500,000 BTUs of energy. Well, this question revolves around the formula Q equals MC delta T. The Q here is the heat, and generally you're doing this in a unit called calories. The mass is in grams of the water, and the specific heat of water, which you may remember even from middle school, is one calorie per gram of water. And this temperature should be in degrees Celsius. So as you can see, we've got a couple obstacles. One, they didn't give this to us in um, calories, so we're going to have to convert that. Two, they didn't give us the temperature in Fahrenheit, so we're going to have to convert that too. And I'm going to go through this as if it was an environmental science AP question or something and you had no calculator. So I want to show you that you don't actually need a calculator to do this, although certainly it would make it easier. Step number one, I'm going to convert the temperature. And a useful thing to know is that every 5 degrees Celsius is 9 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the, uh, the scale. That's why when you look at the temperature, degrees Celsius is always smaller than degrees Fahrenheit. And you can just take 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, if you're doing a conversion, you can think about it, what I like to call is multiplying by 1. Some people call it the factor label method. So if you put this over 1 and you want to get rid of the Fahrenheit, this is going to be 9 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to be 5 degrees Celsius. You're going to see that the Fahrenheit and the Celsius cancel out. If I was to write this just like I would if I was actually taking an exam, I would say, well, 5 times 80 is 400. This is 9. So this is the same as 9 going into 400. 9 into 40. It's 4 minus 36 gives you 4, gives you 0. Multiply again, you're going to get 44. You can see very quickly this has become 44.4444. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take almost everything we do here to two significant digits in scientific notation. It's just going to make doing uh, paper math a little easier. So this is 4.4 .4 times 10 to the 1, or you could write it as 44. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the heat. So I'm going to convert BTUs to calories because that's what we actually use when we do the calculation. And again, I'm going to write this in scientific notation. So um, the amount of uh, heat we're going to be converting is 500,000, which is 5.0 times 10 uh, to the fifth. BTUs. Um, one BTU, at least when I look it up online, is 252 calories. But to make life easier, I'm actually going to assume that this is approximately 250 or 2.5 times 10 to the 2. Now you may say, well, you don't have to write it that way. I, I, I can handle 250. Uh, but I also want to practice with powers of 10, multiplying, dividing, etc. So when you multiply uh, 5.0 times 2.0 times 10 to the 2, it's actually really easy. You take the number part, the 5 times the 2, that gives you 10. And remember, whenever you multiply powers of 10, you're going to add them. So this is going to be 10 times 10 to the 7. Oops, that's a mistake on my part. That should have been 2.5. And this should have been 12.5. Power is still the same, times 10 to the 7, which is going to be uh, approximately, again, this would have been uh, BTUs, and this would have been calories per BTU. Or if you'd have written it out the way I really like, 5 times 10 to the 5th BTU over 1 times every 1 BTU is 2 times, or 2.5 times 10 to the 2.
calories, this is going to be approximately 1.3 times 10. So if I move this decimal over here and make this smaller, this has to get bigger. So that's going to be times 10 to the 8th calories. So we now have the uh, temperature in the units we need degrees Celsius. We have the heat in the units we need calories. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually solve for the mass of water that we could add into the boiler. So we're going to solve for mass. So if we take Q equals MC delta T and we solve that for M, what you're going to get, hold on. Sorry about that. So when you solve for mass, you get Q over C delta T. And we can go ahead and we can plug in the numbers. Now the nice thing about it being in scientific notation is you can write the numbers and the power separately if you want. So the Q here is going to be 1.3 times 10. I'm sorry, wrong number. That's going to be 5 times... All right, let me look, see what I got. Sorry, I got interrupted. 1.3 times 10 to the 8th calories over the C, which was 1 degree Celsius per gram. Times the change in temperature, which was 44, or I'll actually write it as 4.4 times 10 to the 1 degrees Celsius. And this is going to be the same as 1.3 divided by 4.4 times. Now remember when you divide powers of 10, 10 to the plus 8 divided by 10 to the plus 1 is the same as 10 to the 8 minus 1, which is 10 to the 7. And that's going to be in grams. So now since we're doing this by hand, dividing 4.4 into 1.3 is the same as dividing 44 into 13. You can see 44 does not fit into 13, so we're going to have to go one more place. However, 44 will fit into 130. fits in there nine times. 2 times 44 is 88. 130 minus 88 is 42. 44 does not fit into 42. It almost does. Bring down the zero. You can see that this is 9. And then you could do this a, a step further. Uh, but let's actually just stop here and leave this at uh, 0 0.29 times 10 to the 7, which is the same as 2.9. Remember, this gets bigger, so this has to get smaller. Times This power has to get smaller. Times 10 to the 6 grams. But the question doesn't ask us how many grams of water. What it actually asks us for is how many gallons of water. So now the last thing we need to do is we need to convert grams of water to gallons. Now a conversion factor you may know from your kitchen is that one gallon of milk, if you ever look on the side, is actually 3.78 liters or 3,780 milliliters, which is the same as 3,780 grams for water. So again, to make our life easier, I'm going to round this again. So this conversion factor is going to be one gallon is approximately 3.8 times 10 to the 3 grams. And then we just need to convert this number of grams into gallons. So 2.8 times 10 to the 6th grams times, remember put this over 1, we want to get rid of grams, so 3.8 times 10 to the 3rd grams is 1 gallon. So now what we have to do is this is going to be the same as 2.8 divided by 3.8, and then when you take the powers, 10 to the 6th divided by 10 to the 3, subtract the powers, that gives you times 10 to the 3. Again, our little dividing trick, 2.8 divided by 3.8 is the same as 28 divided by 38, or 38 into 280. 38 does not fit into 
uh, 28, but it does fit into 280. Don't forget the decimal here. So this does not fit in 28, but it does fit 280. Fits in 7 times. And 7 times 38, we can actually do on the side here. You can see it's 56. 7 times 3 is 21. 26 when you add the 3, or when you uh, add the 5, rather. So 266, when you subtract, that gives you 14, bring down to 0, and 38 is going to go into 140, uh, not quite 4 times, it's going to go in 3 and change, and let's just go ahead and stop there. So that's going to be 0 0.73 times 10 to the 3 gallons. Let's bring over the decimal place 3 times, that gives you 730 gallons, approximately. Now I did do this with uh, a calculator, and if you wanted to know what the calculator gives you, I'll write these numbers in green. And the calculator gives you the same 44.444 repeating degrees Celsius. And when you do the uh, energy conversion using the full 252 calories, it gives you 1.26 times 10 to the 8th calories. And then when you plug that in, the number of grams that it gives you is 2.835 times 10 to the 6th grams. So even doing this on paper, we're pretty close. And then in terms of number of gallons, when I did that in my calculator, I got 790 gallons. But doing it by hand, we're, we're reasonably... Uh, reasonably close. So hopefully somebody out there finds this useful. I found it fun. I haven't done one of these problems in a little bit of a while and it's good reviewing for my students knowing that they can actually do these calculations which look very challenging without a calculator. I should probably just recap the problem. You've got a boiler. You're raising uh, some amount of water, some unknown amount, 80 degrees Fahrenheit with 500,000 BTUs of energy. Use the formula Q equals MC delta T. You're going to have to do some conversions. You're going to convert the 80 degrees Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius. You're going to convert the heat and BTUs into calories. When you solve for the mass, it's in grams. But the question asks for the amount of water in gallons. So you're going to need to convert the number of uh, grams into gallons. We do that by hand, I got 730 gallons, and when I did it in the calculator, I got 790 gallons.